In this piano tutorial, I want to share a couple of gospel or jazz chords and progressions that we can use within the song Love Theory by Kirk Franklin. And this song is in the key of B flat minor, but let's think about it in terms of its relative major, which is C sharp major, okay? So this song starts off with a very simple progression going from the four to the six and then to the six major. And then it repeats again, right? And it sounds something like this. So we played three chords, but I don't want to focus as much on the actual rhythm of the song, right? There's a bunch of tutorials that focus on the rhythm of the song, but I want to focus more on the voicings that we play for the chords and a couple of passing chords and substitutions that we can include for those chords, okay? So we started off on the four, but this four, um, I want to think about it in a different way. Usually when we play something like a major seventh chord, we're thinking we play the triad, the major triad, and we add the the major seventh note, which in this case would be an F. But in reality, we can think about it in terms of chords, right? So the way that I think about F sharp major seven, and in this particular case, um, we have it separated into two chords, right? I think about a B flat minor in the right hand and then the left hand plays an F sharp right in combination with its major seventh or you can simply think about this F down here as the octave of this F up here right so a B flat minor in second inversion over an F sharp in the bass right and the rhythm for the right hand simply does it's alternating these two notes with these two notes, right? C and E flat. And it's a very groovy song, right? It's not, there's not a specific way of playing the bass part, right? So it's almost like you feel the song, right? Now the next chord is a six chord and we're basically playing a B flat minor 11th, right? And again, this this chord may seem like a big chord to to memorize or to even play in other keys. How how are we going to memorize this chord? And all we have to do is think about two chords combined into one, right? If we analyze it, it's basically an A flat in the right hand, A flat major over a B flat minor in the left hand. And if you want to make it even simpler, you don't have to make it a minor chord. You can just think about a B flat and the perfect fifth, which is F under this A flat, right? And we got this suspended type chord. And for the rhythm, we're simply alternating. It's the same exact rhythm as the first chord, but we're alternating C and E flat with B flat and C sharp, right? And the last chord is simply a B flat major. And this chord is, is sort of taking the role as a passing chord to get back to the four, right? All right, so I want to now modify this progression into something else and this progression that I'm going to play now I actually got from a very talented musician by the name of Jaden Baker you can go ahead and follow him on YouTube and on Instagram right he basically switched up the progression to this song by including um, some extra chords in between the four and the six right so if we analyze that whole progression from four to six, we have a bunch of space between those two chords. So what basically happens is he he goes around the circle of fourths to arrive to the six, right? So it, it sounds something like this.
right so what we did there is play three extra chords in between the four and the six and these chords um the way it's i'm going to get very theoretical now so bear with me but the way that we do this is by analyzing the circle of fourths or the circle of fifths right so we want to get from the four to the six and what we have to do is basically go backwards okay so we're going to go from the from the destination chord which is b flat we're going to go down a fifth right we get f now from f we go down a fifth again we get c and then from c we go down a fifth one more time and we get g right so if we go now instead of in reverse order we go forward we're going to go from the g to the c to the f and then finally to the b flat which is the six right so the bass notes of this progression would be going from the four right we're playing we're going to go to g f sorry g c f and then b flat but what voicings are we going to use for g c f to get to the six in this case right we started off on the f sharp major seventh um, it turns out that the voicing that we use for the passing chords, G, C, F, and then finally 6, um, are all going to be altered chord, right? Um, I guess dominant or altered chords. So the first chord for the G, we play this G7 sharp 5, right? An easy way of forming this chord is by thinking about the G7, right? And all I'm doing is, since it sounds a little bit too muddy down here, I'm taking the B, putting it up here. And then I take the 5, the sharp 5. So the 5 is D. The, the, the 5 of G, sorry, is D. We make it sharp, and we get this sharp 5, right? Another way of thinking about how to form this chord is by combining a triad with G7, right? And this is known um, in music theory as upper structure triads, right? Basically, I'm going to take G7, right? G with the minor seventh. We can include the third down here or up here. And we basically combine it with, in this case, a G augmented chord, right? And we get this G7 sharp five. So that's the first passing chord. Now the next passing chord, is going to be in C, right? And we got this chord. A C7 sharp 9 sharp 5, another altered chord. So this chord, again, using the same theory of upper structure triads, we have C7 in combination with an A flat major triad, right? And we get this C7 very jazzy type chord. But the only thing I did was sort of move around the notes to to this, right? I basically inverted the chord. So this is the passing chord for C. So we had this chord, then this chord, and then the next chord is going to be an F. And believe it or not, it's using a similar formula as well. We're going to play an F7 flat nine sharp five. And again, an easy way of thinking about it is we're playing F7, right? Or F7, and we're going to add an F sharp minor triad. And we get this flat nine sharp five sound, okay? And then finally, we land on the six, which I explained before. So we played four. actually use this same progression in the chorus okay so let's say we're playing the chorus which goes i don't want to love nobody but you right 
right? So this progression in the chorus is a very gospel progression, right? We're playing four, then we go to the seven, three, six, and then we play five, one, and we're back to the four, and we play the same, same progression, seven, three, six, all right? And the voicings that I'm using, again, you can actually be creative with these voicings. I'm using the same F sharp major seven, then for the 7 chord, I'm playing the C minor 7 flat 5. And if we think about it in terms of two chords, all I'm doing is playing an F, um, sorry, an E flat minor over a C, right? Then for the 3 chord, I'm playing this F 7 sharp 5, right? And I like including this B down here to give it a more dissonant sound right so and then we get to the six which is simply a b flat nine says four the same chord as before so now for the five one four progression what i do is play this chord a flat minor nine which is the five in this case and now th this chord again thinking about in terms of different or in terms of a combination of chords i'm simply playing an a b flat major seven over an a flat set a flat seven right that's how i get this a flat minor nine so that's the five then i play this one chord right which is a c sharp nine and then we're back to the four seven three six and now there's actually a part in this song where we sort of turn it around to get back to the four from the six so we play i don't want to love nobody but you see so we went from the six and all we do is go down chromatically but theoretically what we're actually doing is going around the circle of fourths again right it's again we're playing passing chords going from the six to this passing chord which is actually an e flat right we're going six to the two which is the four of the six and continue down the cycle of fourths to the five then to the one and then to the four right but uh a trick that it's sort of a muscle memory that I do with this these type of chords are we go from the six all I do is I play this voicing and I bring down these two notes right B flat and A flat and I get this voicing which is again over an E flat or but um theoretically speaking the tritone of the E flat right A and then I play this voicing for the five, which is the exact same voicing as this one, right? A minor nine voicing, but we do the same exact thing. We bring down these two notes and we get this passing chord, which is again, the tritone substitution for this C sharp or the one, and we get to the four, okay? Hopefully you're still following me. Some of you guys asked me to be a little bit more theoretical, so I'm trying to get into the the meat and bones of the actual chords okay so i don't want to love nobody i don't want to so as i said before we can actually use the same progression that we learned in the beginning right where we played and we can use it um in the part that says right we played i don't want to love nobody but you i don't want to love nobody but you i don't want to love nobody in this progression we actually go from the four to the six again right i don't want to love nobody love nobody but you right so four this is a passing chord to get to the six so we can actually include that same progression from before and it would sound something like this right so 
But in this case, I changed some of the voicings, right? And the reason why I changed some of the voicing is to accommodate to the actual melody of the chorus, right? I don't want to love nobody, love nobody but you. Right, so I played a four in this F sharp major nine voicing. I don't want to love nobody. Now the same chord, right, at G7 sharp 5, but before we played it like this, but in this case, the melody is on F. So I'm going to keep the F here. So I don't want to love nobody. Then we play a C, but we play it in this voicing, right? C7 sharp 9 sharp um, flat 5, right? Again, just an, an E flat minor over a C major. So love nobody right in this case we play an f7 flat 9 and then to keep up with the melody we bring down the e flat to the c sharp and we get this f7 flat 9 flat 13 right a lot of jazzy chord stuff and then we get to the sixth chord so there's one more substitution that I want to share with you guys and it's in this same chorus right I don't know and it's a little bit um a little bit out there right usually you probably won't play it in a live setting but it's a good way to understand um a little bit more of reharms right so it's very simple I don't want to love nobody but you I don't want to love nobody but Right? I'm playing very similar chords, but I'm changing um, the the actual voicings that I'm using, right? Instead of playing seven, three, six, all I'm doing is playing the four. I don't want to love. But the important thing is to maintain the melody. So it doesn't matter what chord I play as long as I maintain the melody. So I don't want to love nobody but you. Then I play a three chord as an F7 flat five. I don't wanna, but this is where it changes a, a bit, right? Instead of playing a, a regular B flat minor um, chord, I make it a major chord, a B flat major 9 13. But the reason why it works is because I'm still maintaining the melody up here, which is F, right? <laughs> right, so I play this B flat major 9, so. That major 9 13 then for the next chord um i play this b major 9 13 so i basically brought up everything from here to here okay so now the last chord that i play Instead of playing a six, I played a two. And again, the reason why it works is because the melody is maintained, okay? So. so hopefully you were able to catch or follow along with this lesson and i invite you to to experiment with the chords that we use um not only in this song but any other song that you're familiar with 
and try to reharmonize only with the purpose of getting better with your vocabulary, right? Your musical vocabulary, being able to learn different chords and be able to identify these different chords.